Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how to change scenes in the Godot game engine. So here's a game I've been working on recently, and the changing scenes feature will kind of look something like this. So I'm walking through the end of the map, and then while I walk through, oh, it's the wrong one. So I was on the wrong branch. Here's the working branch. So as you can see, as I walk through the end of the map, I'm able to go to the next map. And if I go to back, I'm able to go back to the next map. And notice how the position of the character and also the direction he's facing is also in the correct way. This is what I'll go over today. Let me just exit out. Let's come into our scenes in which we want the transition to be in. So here in my game, I have a mind scene, which is one map. And I'll press Control A to add a new scene. And I'll add an Area 2D node. And let's name this area 2D portal. And within the area 2D, we need a collision shape 2D. And we'll give it a shape. Come in here. New rectangle shape 2D would work just fine for our use case. And I'll resize it to something like this. And then I'll put it in a spot where we want the player to walk through so it can trigger the function to transition to the next scene. Well, something like this would work just fine. And we'll s come to portal and then right click and we'll save branch as scene. And we do this because we want to be able to reuse this scene in multiple maps. Great. So now we'll right click and actually we'll click this edit button so we can just edit this scene. So let's create a new script for our portal. Click on portal and then click add script and then create and let's get rid of all this stuff. And at the top of the script, let's add tool. And I'll tell you why we add tool later on. First, we want to create a variable called next scene path, which tells us which scene we want to transition into. And the default value will set it to an empty string. And then we'll add another function called get configurations warning. And we check if the next scene path is empty, then we give the user our warning. And this is where the the tool keyword comes into play. It tells the editor what warning to give. Portal to work. A string like that would be just fine. And else return nothing. Control S to save. And then when we go to portal, we, when we click here, we're able to see the script variable next scene path. And now we're able to edit whatever map we want easily and quickly. Let's go back to the script. We want to create a signal to let the portal know that the player entered its area. And to do that, we click area, the area 2D node, and then we go to the node tab on the right hand side. And since the player is usually a kinematic body type, and if it's an area type, you'll click this, but usually it's a body. So we'll click body entered, double click that, and then we'll click portal on the top and then click connect. So in this function, we want to change the scene to whatever is set as the next scene path. To do this, we'll first get the tree by doing get tree, and then we'll call, call the function change scene. And within it, we'll pass in the next scene string. And the change scene function returns an error message. So we can get the value of it. Actually, I don't need parentheses. And then we'll check if it's equal to OK. If it's not, that means something went wrong or the next scene path is invalid. So we can do some error handling. And then here. Uh, right now, I'll just print unavailable scene. And I'll type in error. Now we want to assign collision masking so that the portal only looks 
for the player body and the player body is also looking for the portal. To do that, we go to project settings and we'll scroll down all the way to layer names, 2D physics. So I have other layers and the only layers that you should care about is the player layer, which you assign to your player and also the portals layer. So to add a portal, uh, to add a layer, you just type in a name and that's pretty much it. We'll click close and then we'll click on portal, the edit the scene button, click on portal again, and then go to inspector. And in the collision tab, we can set which layer it's currently on. So the portal would be on the portal layer that we created. And we'll get rid of that. So that's what layer means. What layer is the current node on? And mask is, you can essentially think about it as what layer does it look towards? So we want to look towards the player layer. And we'll get rid of the other layer that's selected. This helps us as now the portal only looks for the player and not all the other nodes in the scene. And this helps speed up our program. So let's open our player scene. Player scene right here. And then in the collision uh, section, we can see that the player layer is selected for the layer. And for mask, it's on the world and it's also looking to the portal layer. So make sure those options are selected. Okay, so now let's go back to our portal. We'll control S to save. And then we'll go back to the scene in which we encapsulated the portal, which in my case is the, the mines scene. And then let's click, click on portal and let's set the next scene path. And the map I want to transition to is I have a scene called root, which is another map of mine. We click that. So that's set. And let's try running this. Respond. So one thing that I forgot to do is also add the portal in the other map, which is my root. So let's quickly add that. We'll instance, we'll click on root first and then instance a child scene. And we'll type in portal, portal. So we got portal and it is right here. And we'll put it there. And then also we have to set the next scene path parameter and we'll set it to the mines. So it goes back and forth. Click OK. Now that we have the portal scene instance in both our maps, one other thing that we need to specify is where the player is actually going to spawn. We didn't specify a position. An easy way to do this is to auto load a script. And auto load is essentially a global script which can be referenced by any node in the game. So you can create a new script called global. And I have one already set up here. And all we really care about is a variable called player initial map position. So this specifies where the player should spawn. So right now I have it arbitrarily set at a random value. And then within our portal scene, let's go to the portal script. Let's create another export variable. And this would be of type vector two, player spawn location. And then we'll set it at, at vector two zero initially. And then here, we want to set the global variable. So it's global dot, let me go back and get the correct variable name. Global dot player initial map position. And then we set it to the player spawn location that we set. So now this is set up, but we have to make sure that in our ready function for our player node, we set the location to player initial map position. So let's go to our player node and we go to our ready function in our player node. And you can see that I have self.global position, which is a player's location. And we set it to the global variable player initial map position. So this should set the location of the player and 
now if we go to the mines scene, we can see that there is a script variable called player spawn location. Now we can set this differently for any scene that we add the portal to. So within our mine scene, we have to set the player spawn location to where it would be in the root scene. So we go to root 2D and we want the player to spawn somewhere around here. And then we'll look, the position is 1005 and 76. So let's go back to the mines and then we'll set X to 1005 and then Y to 76. So now we have to do the same thing for the root portal. So we go here, player spawn location. Let's go back to mines and figure out a good spot. Uh, somewhere here is fine. And we'll check the position where it's at, 79, 78. Seventy nine, seventy eight. So now let's try running this. Let's keep going to the right. And cool. So we're able to spawn in the position that we specified. We go back and we go to the root scene. And we can keep going back and forth. One more thing to do is to fix the player direction. So say I'm in my first map and I keep walking towards the right and I go to the next map and I'm facing towards the right which is correct and expected but if I go towards the left and go back to the next map I'm facing towards the right when I spawn and we can easily fix this by also specifying the player direction within our global script so let's go back to our global script and I also I already have a variable called player face and direction. And since my game is my game is a platforming game with only two directions, I only care about the x direction. And it would be either 1 to represent right and negative 1 to represent left. And if you were to do a top-down game, you would have four directions to worry about if you had portals on the top and bottom of the screen. So we have this variable set here. And then within our portal script, let's create another script variable. Export int var player direction. And we'll just set it to one. And then within the function, we'll call global.player facing direction. And we'll set it to player direction. Let me just make sure that's the right variable name. Yep. And now within our nodes within the scenes, so in the portal scene, we can set what player direction should be when they go to the next map. If I'm coming from the right to the left, I should be facing the left. So this should be negative one. And in the root, it should be one. So let's try this out, make sure I got that right. Okay, cool. And I think I forgot to tell you, we also have to set the position or the direction of the player within the player script in its ready function. I have a function called set blend position and I pass in the X direction to correctly set the animation of facing to the left or the right. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.